With how the world is now, it can be hard for us to imagine a time without the technology of artificial intelligence, considering it is surrounding us all of the time. But it was not very long ago that the things we carry with us now in our pockets were just dreams and things to write stories about. From some of the first mathematical equations that we now apply to AI technology today, to stories and films imagining what it could one day look like, all the way to the creation of the very first pieces of AI technology. What is up top 10 fam? Welcome back. I am your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and today we are going to be looking at the top 10 signs of artificial intelligence in history. Starting off this list at our number 10 spot, we have the Bayesian inference. One of the people who really marks the beginning of what would eventually be AI technology is Thomas Bayes. Thomas was an English statistician, philosopher, and Presbyterian minister, but he is best known for formulating the Bayes theorem. One integral part of artificial intelligence is the ability to learn and make decisions, often based on incomplete information, like we as humans have the ability to do. Thomas's work was so important because all the way back in 1763, he was able to develop the framework for reasoning about the probability of events. He used math in order to update the probability of a hypothesis as more information becomes available regarding the situation. What is now called Bayesian inference is important in many different ways, but one of those is certainly for machine learning, and it marks one of the earliest advancements in the timeline of the history of AI. In our number 9 spot today, we have poetical science. In 1842, Charles Babbage was working on the analytical engine, which was a proposed mechanical general purpose computer. While Charles was never able to actually complete this computer for a multitude of reasons, including not having access to proper funding, one of the people he worked on the machine with is who I really want to talk about today. Ada Lovelace was an English mathematician who was helping Charles with his lofty project. While she was a great help, she also envisioned more for the project. She saw the opportunities that lay beyond just the equations and dreamed of a computer that wouldn't just crunch numbers, but that could solve problems no matter how complicated. At this point in time, the idea of a machine having any real world application besides calculation was the stuff of dreams, but Ada wasn't afraid to ask the questions about what if, and she called her idea poetical science. She obviously greatly contributed to the creation and ideas of the analytical engine, but her most important contribution was that of her imagination, which foretold computer advancements nearly a hundred years before they actually existed. In our number 8 spot today, we have the birth of robots. What if I told you that robots didn't exist until 1921? Well, that's not exactly true, but what's even crazier is that the word robot didn't even exist until 1921. While we now think of the mechanical beings with funny sound voices, or perhaps your Roomba, or really just so many things as robots, just a hundred years, the word was just coming into use for the very first time. Czech playwright, novelist, and journalist Karl Kapik was the first one to use this word in his 1920s hit play RUR, or Rossum's Universal Robots. At the time, he had derived the word from an old church Slavonic word, robota, which could be translated to mean servitude or forced labor. The play in itself saw a company using the latest scientific advancements in order to mass produce workers who lack nothing but a soul. The robots do all of the work that humans don't want to, and soon the company is flourishing with orders. In the end of the play, spoiler alert I guess, the robots revolt against their human creators, and after they kill pretty much all humans, they realize that they messed up because they need humans to create them. Anyway, you didn't come here for a play synopsis, but how insane is that? The very first mention of robots somehow managed to produce predict a world where they exist, and also the possible robot takeover that we all are still kind of worried about a hundred years later. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Turing Test. During the time of the Second World War, everything that was going on in the world ended up bringing together scientists from many disciplines, which truly is one of the best ways for science to advance. In Britain in particular, two of the greatest minds began to collaborate. Alan Turing was a mathematician and Gray Walter was a neurologist, and together the two of them began to tackle the idea of intelligence machines. They constantly bounced ideas off of each other and this led to Gray building some of the first ever robots. Ok, considering the word was created just 20 years before this, that's fairly impressive. What's even cooler however is that Alan went on to create what is called the Turing test. This test really set the bar for intelligent machine creation because this test was a computer that was able to fool someone into thinking that they were talking to another person. I guess maybe this is basically not only a sign of artificial intelligence, but maybe Maybe the first artificial intelligence ever created? In our number 6 spot today, 
we have neural activity. In 1943, Warren S. McClaw and Walter Pitts published a paper entitled A Logical Calculus of the Ideas Imminent in Nervous Activity. This paper was in the Bulletin of Mathematical Biophysics and it became a highly influential piece of information. The paper basically examined and discussed different networks of simplified artificial neurons and how those neurons might act in order to perform or answer simple logical questions or situations. So basically trying to mimic what neurons in our brains do when we are faced with a simple logical situation. Well, you might be sitting there wondering why I am talking about this at all, but it was a super important paper in terms of the scientific community and for the later advancement of AI technology because these discussions in the paper would later become the inspiration for computer based neural networks as well as what is now known as deep learning. While this wasn't necessarily what the paper set out to do, it ended up being useful in more ways than anyone other than Ada Lovelace was imagining in 1943. In our number 5 spot today we have iRobot. I've definitely talked about the stunning 2004 film starring Will Smith before on this channel, but today we are throwing it back to the original iRobot, which was a collection of short stories written in 1950 by science fiction writer Isaac Asimov. The collection showed how Isaac was one of the first writers to really dive in and explore the world of machine intelligence and what the future of that may look like. Many people have claimed that these stories actually serve as inspiration for young scientists and roboticists to be. Isaac not only created these short stories but also created the three laws of robotics which are specifically designed to help our AI creations from turning on us. When looking back on these stories it is quite interesting and truly remarkable to see how broad but also strangely accurate his imagination was. He was dreaming up things like, I don't know, a computer capable of storing all of human knowledge that anyone can ask a question to? Seems like Google might have drawn their inspiration from Mr. Asimov. In our number 4 spot today we have the entrance of machine learning. In 1959, Arthur Samuel wrote a report on programming a computer, but it wasn't just regular old computer programming. He was reporting on programming it in such a way that, quote, it will learn to play a better game of checkers than can be played by the person who wrote the program, end quote. This of course is quite an important stop on the AI journey because it's the beginning of the classic human versus computer games, which we obviously still use more now than ever before. Another reason why this is important to include today is because of the fact that this report saw Arthur coining the phrase machine learning. Remember a couple years ago when we had never really heard the words social distancing before and now it seems like we can't go a day without hearing those words? Well this was kind of like that except way more exciting and fun. This phrase would end up being something that basically epitomized the entire field of AI and set everyone up for what was to come. In our number 3 spot today we have a space odyssey. Ok, please tell me that everyone here has seen the 1968 epic science fiction film 2001 A Space Odyssey. If you haven't seen this cinematic masterpiece, it was directed by Stanley Kubrick and the central plot of the film follows a voyage to Jupiter after the discovery of an alien monolith and on this journey is a sentient computer HAL 9000. Other than just being a classic, I obviously wanted to talk about this movie today because of HAL. The character really reflected the beliefs that a lot of people had about AI technology during the 60s when this film was made. In the movie at one part when HAL is being interviewed, he says that he is foolproof and incapable of error. Another character in the film states that they believe HAL may actually have genuine human emotions. Basically what I'm saying is that this movie shows exactly how people at the time were predicting that AI technology would soon reach a level of human intelligence and it also reflects reflects the fear that just as quickly as this new exciting technology might develop, it might also turn troublesome as well. This is definitely still a fear among some today, but it was much worse back then when there was still so much unknown about this kind of technological advancement. In our number 2 spot today we have Shaky. In 1969 there was a huge breakthrough in AI technology, even though it kind of sucked, but that's ok because everything needs to start somewhere and small steps are what has led us to where we are today. Also, let's be clear, you're making one of the first mobile robots and you name it Shaky? That just seems like an omen waiting to come true. Anyway, Shaky was the first general purpose mobile robot that was able to process decisions about its actions on its own. It would build a map of what it saw 
saw before moving so as to avoid any obstacles. That doesn't sound so bad for the first independent mobile robot, but apparently it was painfully slow. Like even when there were barely any obstacles around, because every time it moved a bit, it would have to basically recalibrate and check its surroundings again to update the map. Also, if there was a moving object in front of it, sometimes it would take over an hour for Shaky to figure out what to do or where to go. So yeah, it wasn't exactly a super sophisticated piece of robotic technology, but it was something, and that is usually better than nothing. Shaky walked so that Roomba could get stuck near a cliff. In our number one spot today, we have the RI. By the time the 1980s rolled around, there wasn't much more in terms of AI technology compared to Shaky we just talked about, so people were really starting to doubt whether or not technology could ever get to a human level artificial intelligence. But what really helps scientific advancements other than brilliant minds? Proper funding. Once rich people started to realize the commercial value of artificial intelligence and started putting money towards it, things really began to pick up. Another reason this was helpful was because of the fact that these commercial tasks were focusing on smaller, much more specialized categories of AI technology rather than just trying to create the extremely ambitious forms of AI that were previously the focus. So these newer AI creations for these commercial tasks would only need to be programmed with rules pertaining to a particular and specific problem. This is what led to the creation of the first successful commercial AI system, which was called the RI. RI was created to help the Digital Equipment Corporation by helping configure orders for new computer systems. Okay, that seems like a fairly simple task, especially by today's computer standards. This little creation went on to save the company an estimated $40 million a year. So yeah, it went well. Of course, once people caught wind of how much this kind of technology could save them, more people turned their eyes and their money to fund this technology, and now here we are with Google, Alexa, and Siri always at our fingertips. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozulowski. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed today's video, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye. Spot, we have the Bayesian interf... It, nope. <laughs> Just added a T into that word for no reason. Thomas was an English statistician. <laughs> statistician. Yes, though. So I think that's how you say it. Good job, Chris. McClaw. <laughs> McClough. I don't know. <coughs> oh, I almost died right at the end there. <laughs>